Hello. Today, I'll teach you how to use a microscope. First, we need to learn how to prepare a microscope slide. This is a microscope slide. This is a microscope slide. And this is a cover glass. You just need one of them. This is iodine solution. The specimen will be placed on top of the microscope slide. Then we will cover it with a cover slip. Okay, the cover slip will be tilted 30 degrees before it is being dropped down onto the specimen. So let's get started on our specimen preparation. Let's cut the onion. The skin is a bit impenetrable, so you can remove the skin first. Here we have a nice peel of onion. You have to cut a small square out of it and then we peel a slice out of it. Here you can see we have a small square. We have a small square. Then let's peel a layer, a thin layer of it. There you go, we have a thin layer. Place this thin layer on top of the microscope slide. Try and spread it out because, as you know earlier, it is a square. Iodine solution. Drop some drops of iodine solution onto it to make it easier to spread. And the iodine solution is also providing contrast to the cells, the transparent cells. Without iodine solution, the transparent cells will not be visible under the microscope.
cover slip must be placed 30 degree like this 30 degree until it touches the iodine solution let's get the help of the forcep slide the forcep slide the iodine solution That looks good. There you can see there are very little bubbles around. The reason for you to slide that way, that is place by placing the car slip at 30 degree and then uh, slowly releasing the car slip before dropping it onto the specimen is to reduce the formation of bubbles found on the specimen because if there is bubble your uh, observation under the microscope will be affected let's close up our iodine solution so after dropping the cow slip you notice that there are excess iodine beside the car slip okay and at this region here you can see that there are no iodine so what you can do is you can try to place the filter paper over at this side to absorb the iodine solution when it's absorbed the iodine will move over here and cover the area that don't have iodine at the same time, we can also remove the excess iodine on the side. So you can see that it's moving. And the iodine has now completely covered the car slip. And the area, everything will be even okay let's transfer the microscope slide onto the stage before transferring let's make sure there's enough space over here by turning the objective lens towards the lowest magnification which is of the shortest length and also turning the knob downwards so that the stage is at its lowest then you have enough space to transfer your microscope slide after placing it here let's adjust a bit using here the knob over here so that our specimen is right at the center of the view okay subsequently let's adjust the knob towards the topmost let me have a brief introduction of microscope here we have a 10 times eye lens okay 10 times eye lens and we have 4 times objective lens followed by the 10 times objective lens followed by the 40 times objective lens and 100 times objective lens how to determine the magnification of what you observe example if i'm using this objective lens Coupled together with the eyepiece, it would be 40 times because this is 4 times and the, uh, the eyepiece is 10 times. So 4 times 10, it will be 40. How about this one? 
40 times. 40 times times 10 is 400 times of magnification. Well, this one is 1000 times of magnification. Okay. When you want to mount your microscope slide, you push the knob to the lowest. When you are done, when you are ready to view your specimen, you should push your stage to the uppermost. What's the reason for this? The reason for this is if you push the stage to the highest point, when you're going to readjust it later, you're going to just turn it downwards. You won't turn it upwards. Okay? So, when you're viewing the microscope, your eye is occupied. So, you cannot basically um, take note of the lens, whether it's touching the microscope slide or not. So, in that case, it is safer for you to turn downwards to have the microscope slide leaving the, uh, the lens as opposed to moving towards the lens. Why? Let's take a look at 100 magnification. It is very long due to uh, the highest magnification. So if you were to move it upwards without realizing what's happening with your eye occupied, the microscope slide will touch the lens, either breaking it or scratching it. So it's best to have your eye unoccupied, turn the stage towards the highest point because you will know when you touch the lens. Then slowly, when your eye is occupied that time, you will turn it downwards instead of upwards. The microscope slide will be leaving the lens instead of moving towards the lens. Okay? So you have no chance of it breaking the lens. So that will be our practice. We will always turn the stage up the highest before occupying your eye with what is being observed. Uh, and then slowly use your knobs. Okay, um, as for knobs, let me introduce two knobs over here. We have the coarse knob and the fine knob. The cost knob will basically adjust or allow you to scan at a faster rate. Okay, when you're scanning the field for the specimen, okay, you will scan at a faster rate. The fine knob is for scanning it slowly. As you can see, when you turn this, this one moves very slowly. When you turn this, this one moves very quickly. So in other words, the coarse knob is to scan at a faster rate, while the fine knob is to scan at a uh, slower rate. By practice, we turn on, we turn the knob, the coarse knob. Okay to find the specimen. So once you found the image of the specimen, you switch to find knob so that you can finally readjust the image to make it sharp, to make it super clear.